Good evening. A bit of information before we start the webinar. Indonesia offers huge investment opportunities. Indonesia Investment Forum, therefore, has organized conferences in Singapore, Hong Kong, New York, and many other global investment centers in the world. The forum discussed various investment opportunities in Indonesia and aims to open the dialogue between Indonesian business as the investment target and global investors. Other than the three webinars in July and August 2022, including this webinar, Indonesia Investment Forum will be organizing in-person conferences in Manhattan, New York in September, October, November 2022 this year. And for more information on that, please visit www.indonesiainvestmentforum.com. Good evening, Jakarta time. Good evening as well for those watching from Hong Kong, Shanghai, Dubai, Singapore, Tokyo, and Seoul. Good afternoon for those joining us from London and Paris, and good morning, New York time. So other than through the Zoom platform, we also live stream this event on several digital platforms, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and other platforms. Hello, and welcome to Road to New York Indonesia Investment Forum by Sector Series 2022. Today, we will be discussing about Invest in Indonesia Infrastructure Part 1. I'm Alin Ragmaja, and it's a pleasure for me to be the host for today's webinar. I'm honored to acknowledge the presence of our notable speakers today. A warm welcome to Mr. Destiawan Suwarjono, President Director Waskita Karya, good evening. Or, yeah, it's still evening, right? You're in Dubai, yeah, good if evening, I'm not mistaken. Ellie. Yes, thank you so much for joining us today. Mr. Hendra Purnama, Investment Director, Daya Mitra Telecommunikasi, or widely known as Mitra Tel. Good evening. Thank you for joining good the evening. event. Good yes, evening. and we are glad to have Mr. Michael Jefferson, Chairman of Hammer Slack Private. Hi, good morning, New York Time, Michael. Okay, we will unmute. Good. Yes. Thank you for making the time to join this webinar. And we also have Mr. Christophita Wiloto, founder and chairman of Indonesia Investment Forum. Hello, good evening, Mr. Christophita Wiloto. Yes, we will talk to you later. So amid economic uncertainties, recently rating and investment information, RNI has affirmed Indonesia's sovereign credit rating at triple B plus investment grade with a stable outlook. Key factors supporting the decision are external stability with continued support, with continued economic recovery and improving fiscal condition. Although the inflation rate in Indonesia is rising gradually, there is still room for monetary policy to maneuver for Bank Indonesia, while the fiscal position will likely improve against the backdrop of rising commodity prices. As we all know, Indonesia is a commodity-based country. This affirmation shows strong confidence from international stakeholders on Indonesia's maintained macroeconomic stability and a favorable medium-term economic prospects and its heightened global uncertainties once again. Indonesia's large population and strong domestic demand is contributing to its positive outlook. With a population of 270 million, Indonesia has a large domestic market and a growing and affluent middle class supports GDP growth. Underpinning this positive outlook is the Indonesian government's pledge 
to improve infrastructure development in the country to support and sustain economic growth in Indonesia. Therefore, Indonesia government increased its infrastructure investment needs to 429.7 billion USD in 2020 to 2024. So we are pleased to present you today Indonesia Investment Forum Invest in Indonesia Infrastructure Part 1. We encourage all participants to engage in a discussion by writing down your questions in the chat box or in the comment box. We will be discussing your questions in a Q&A session at the end of this webinar. So without further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Christoph Ita Wogloto, Founder and Chairman Indonesia Investment Forum, to talk more about Indonesia Investment Forum, the event that we're currently participating. Mr. Wogloto. Thanks, Aline. Actually, so, Indonesia, yeah? Yes. What makes it different, like the Indonesia Investment Forum, the initiative that you work on? Yeah, basically, this is the Indonesia Investment Forum that uh, organized by private, not by government. And we already start in year 2013. Uh, we have uh, made this event in Singapore, Hong Kong, and now we start in New York. The other uniqueness of this Indonesia Investment Forum is basically we are not uh, like a country roadshow or country exposed. And once a year, we use to more focus to every single sector, such as uh, infrastructure, property, banking, finance, agriculture, health industry, education, manufacturing, tourism industry, logistic, plantation and forestry, satellite and telecommunication, energy, oil and gas, mineral and coal, startup, aviation and fishery. Why we are focused on every single sector of Indonesia? Because uh, when we discuss about the every single uh, sectors of industry, we need uh, special investors that playing in that kind of industry. And also the investee is different from one sector to another sector. So basically we need one day at least to discuss about that. And the minister sometimes different also because uh, the, uh, the minister who handle the forestry, for example, different from the infrastructure. Uh, and basically, we want to open the opportunity for the global market, global investors, not only in capital market, but also non-capital market to join and looking the opportunity to invest in Indonesia. Why? Because Indonesia is Indonesia. Indonesia is Indonesia is Indonesia is Indonesia. That's why Indonesia is very unique. Indonesia is only the only country and we cannot compare with any other country because we are very huge. You can imagine that we have 17,000 islands. We have over 20 uh, to 270 million people. And now we are the largest young population in the world. What's the meaning of that? The meaning that uh, disruptions start from the young generations. And Indonesia is the most uh, number of lar largest uh, young populations in the world right now. You can see that we have a lot of startups and uh, disruption will come not only go to Indonesia, but come from Indonesia to the world. Uh, this is the opportunity for Indonesia to grow and we cannot wait uh, anymore. So that's why uh, in New York, we plan to make Indonesia Investment Forum every single month. Why every single month? Because we have to focus in every single industry. So that's why we make every single month. Uh, not as big as usual, not as uh, glamorous as usual, but we more focus. We will invite uh, around five investors to, in, uh, to present in every single conference. And we will invite uh, 100 to 300 uh, uh, global uh, players, global investors to come. And after that, the day after that, we open the opportunity for every single uh, investor to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the uh, they invest, they can talk directly uh, with them. Uh, they can make a deal with them. And basically, if there's an opportunity, we also will bring the some minister, ministers, Indonesian ministers, and some regulation alligator also to come to the conference. And if they have time, we will open also the opportunity to, opportunity to do a one-on-one -on -one with them. 
uh, with that kind of uh, opportunity, basically uh, uh, investor can talk and looking for the digging more about the the opportunity in Indonesia. Basically, uh, until uh, August, we will have three different webinars, uh, free webinars. And after that, in September, we will make a in-person conference in New York, uh, in Midtown, uh, Manhattan, also in October and uh, November. Uh, because of the winter, uh, December we don't have any. December and January we will no uh, don't have any uh, conference, but starts uh, February 2023 until November 2023 we plan to have every single month uh, a conference, uh, a New York Indonesia Investment Forum by Sector Series 2023, uh, and basically uh, we. We hoping that this is become a snowballing effect, effect, snowballing effect because this is the start, and after that the snowballing will grow, and we hope this is to become the blessing for Indonesia, uh, so Indonesia can grow uh, faster than before because we need uh, a lot of investment, and basically because uh, we open the the opportunity for investors so wide, so many, so basically that the competition and competitive market of investors. So uh, hopefully Indonesian can get the good trade, the good uh, service, not only from the portfolio investor, but also for the uh, strategic investor. We need strategic investor for every single industry. We need expertise, we need technology, we need innovations. Uh, we can collaborate not only from Indonesia region, from the globe that uh, basically uh, Basically, we uh, this this conference we put in also in Ukraine. We 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 put in Facebook in Ukraine, and uh, this is a very surprising that uh, the demand or the people who click this from Ukraine is a lot. Is three thousand people amazed because uh, the, the country with the war right now. They're looking for the opportunity and they interested with this kind of uh, webinar activity. So basically, uh, we will see the snowballing effect, another snowballing effect from the globe uh, to come to Indonesia and bring the blessing to Indonesia so Indonesia can grow from, uh, very fast. Thank you, Ali. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Willoto. Great initiative, of course. And make sure you visit www.indonesiainvestmentforum.com to stay updated with our upcoming events. And for the next session, we have Mr. Destiawan Suwarjono, President Director, Waskita Karya. Waskita Karya is a state-owned construction company that has participated in a wide variety of construction activities since 1960, carrying out big-scale and monumental projects all over Indonesia, including Indonesia new capital in Kalimantan. Other than that, Waskita Karya since 2006 has executed several projects overseas. Mr. Destiawan Suarjono, the time is yours. Okay, thank you, Ali. Uh, good evening and good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and in Indonesia, New York, from uh, everywhere. Yeah, now I'm uh, starting for the conference in uh, Dubai. Uh, it's such an honor for me to be invited this, in this prestigious uh, event, webinar of road to New York Indonesia Investment Forum. Uh, I will introduce uh, my company, is uh, PT Waskita Karya Persero TBK. Is a public company and uh, state-owned uh, company and public, uh, 75% owned by government and 25% by public. Uh, PT Waskita Karya established in uh, 1961. And now we are the one of the biggest construction company in Indonesia. Can... Uh, Open the slide. Uh, Waskita Karya have the vision. We just uh, renew our vision. Yeah, it's uh, one of the leading company in the 
foster ecosystem sustainability and how to implement it. Our vision, we have the six uh, mission. Next. Uh, sorry, next slide. Yeah. In the group, uh, Waskita have uh, six uh, subsidiary and the majority we uh, our uh, business in the uh, construction company yeah, and we have the investment yeah, especially in the tall road and this our big investment in uh, our company and we since 2015 we established the totally the length of the road uh, 1100 uh, kilometer our revenue mainly coming from the three business, which are investment, construction, and uh, manufacture. They are the strongly integrated. First, we do investment in the toll road yeah, and also property we have, but uh, yeah, not under uh, developing. And also non toll road, uh, especially for the power plant and the steel structure, we have the Waskita Karya Infrastructure. So overall, 19 revenue coming from the uh, construction work in the uh, main uh, our main business. <laughs> yeah, since uh, like I said before that, uh, since 2015, as kita have the 19 concession, and now uh, one by one, when the, after we completed the toll road and. Uh, after the uh, operation, uh, we have the recycling yeah, and the result of revenue from the, our um, recycling, the toll road, we will move into the new investment again. Next slide. Uh, we are currently also not only in the investment, but uh, in the uh, construction uh, job. Uh, now we have the more than 100 uh, projects yeah, almost in uh, Indonesia, almost uh, 150 uh, projects. And now a uh, major of our project is in uh, infrastructure. This is the strategic national project uh, ordered by the government almost, and also the state fund, another state fund company. And we hopefully, and uh, next year will be almost uh, complete with our, our project. <clears throat> also in Top Road, yeah, not only in uh, Java Central, but we have also in uh, Sumatra and uh, also. Uh, almost in uh, Java, yeah, and uh, totally uh, 1,100,000 uh, kilometers. And now uh, half of our toll road is already operation and uh, half uh, partially operation. And uh, we have the target to complete it in the next year. So in the end of 2023, all the toll road on by Waskita will be completed. And we starting to uh, offer the investor to take our uh, concession. Yeah, so uh, Waskita will uh, order to moving to another investment in the toll road. <laughs> next. Yeah, next. Yeah, this is uh, our uh, experience uh, project in uh, Indonesia. Uh, next. Yes, next. Uh, Waskita financial and uh, operational performance had been hardly hit by the uh, pandemic of COVID. -19. As you can see, our new contract achievement also affected by uh, pandemic. Uh, due to the reallocation of state budget and uh, SOA 
capex for uh, COVID related expenses. Yeah, but since uh, pandemic has been well managed by the government. Yeah, and impact of uh, pandemic of COVID. Uh, yeah, our performance. Uh, uh, we have trend going to uh, down, but now we can uh, start it uh, moving to uh, going up. Uh, totally uh, contract by uh, government, also the uh, state and uh, private. Uh, now we have almost uh, 4.5 uh, billion US dollars. And this is our target also from, uh, until the end of uh, 2022. Yeah. And this the uh, uh, big opportunity in uh, this year and next year, yeah, especially uh, like uh, Alin mentioned that uh, new capital is the big opportunity because the government have the plan to complete the uh, uh, part of the construction and uh, infrastructure facilities in the middle of 2024. So this is the big uh, challenge uh, for us as the construction uh, company to uh, prepare and to uh, make the good performance because only two years we have to make a complete with the uh, yeah, almost big uh, budget for the new capital. Next. Uh, during the this challenge uh, time, uh, we went, we have the, my mean is during the condition of pandemic and when the performance of uh, Waskita Karya uh, going down, uh, we have the extreme performance to uh, recovery over uh, financial. Yeah. yeah, especially we have the restructuring with the uh, lender, and then we uh, have the complete uh, of the toll route and also uh, recycling, yeah, uh, the uh, concession of toll route. And then uh, yeah, supporting by the government for the uh, additional and uh, for the of uh, equity, yeah, uh, this uh, big uh, supporting for the government, yeah, injection of uh, capital, and already done for the last year, and this year also will be uh, supporting again by the government, and also we have the. Uh, Structuring our uh, subsidiary and already done in the, for the our uh, majority subsidiary and also restructuring uh, uh, and sorry uh, transformation of our uh, business. Yeah, uh, this is an important thing because uh, the situation and for the future we will uh, concentrate in the uh, construction. And we less participation uh, program for the investment of uh, toll road until we have the complete uh, our construction of uh, toll road. <coughs> Next, uh, this is the requirement investment funding from uh, and until 2024, uh, government have the big program yeah, for the infrastructure, yeah, and amounting uh, six thousand, yeah, more than six thousand trillion rupiah, yeah. and this government only can cover around thirty-seven uh, percent, yeah. And uh, state government, uh, I mean, a state-owned company also can cover 21%. Uh, yeah. uh, so we need the uh, private company to uh, participate the uh, investment uh, 
of uh, government program in uh, infrastructure. So the big challenge our for the uh, uh, investor to participate in the uh, infrastructure in uh, project in Indonesia. To give you uh, more color, there are several uh, government uh, infrastructure uh, program like I said uh, uh, before, and uh, especially in uh, part of uh, Sumatra, uh, government have a program from the Aceh until uh, Lampung, uh, around uh, more than 2,500 kilometers and partially already done. And what kita have uh, around 100 kilometers uh, in uh, Palembang until the uh, border of uh, South Sumatra and Jambi. Uh, this is a uh, big challenge. And also, uh, when the capital of Indonesia moving to the Kalimantan, yeah, uh, the next program of the uh, highway of uh, our toll road will be uh, planning to build, uh, to construct in the Kalimantan also. Now there are the, uh, yeah, small toll route in Kalimantan between Samarinda and Balikpapan, and will be continue the, uh, to the new capital. Yeah, this is a program in the uh, construction of uh, develop the capital, also connection with the toll route uh, between capital and uh, uh, Toll of Samarinda Balikpapan, <clears throat> and uh, we have several project also yeah, in uh, our pipeline and to be supported by the uh, external partner yeah, and for <clears throat> in Indonesia. Uh, but Waskita uh, for the future, yeah, we have plan to moving not only Indonesia, we will develop uh, to the overseas uh, country. Now we have the contract in the Timor Leste uh, for the road also, because uh, Waskita have a big experience in the toll road. Uh, so for the overseas, we will concentrate but to the uh, road uh, construction. Yeah. And uh, next, now under process for moving to the South Sudan, yeah, especially the Africa, uh, Africa countries, there are big opportunity for the uh, infrastructure. Uh, so Waskita also plan to uh, moving for the road construction, especially to the Africa. Yeah, especially we have the uh, big experience in the Middle East. So we uh, we will start starting again yeah, in the Middle East uh, because we also have the uh, uh, resources and we uh, in the Middle East. Uh, this is our good uh, uh, preparation for our uh, company. Yeah. And in the overseas, uh, we have planned for the uh, next uh, uh, five years, we have the uh, around five to 10% contribution to our uh, revenue. So Waskita, uh, will be uh, still uh, sustainable for the construction and yeah, especially investment in Indonesia in the toll road will be continue and also in uh, property and then in uh, port plan. I think that's all in uh, my uh, presentation and yeah, hopefully that uh, can uh, we have that can partner yeah with the uh, investor from the Nazi country and with uh, Waskita Karya, so to and uh, for developed infrastructure in Indonesia and also uh, another country, especially in uh, Africa. And uh, we are ready to move in there. That's all. Uh, thank you for your attention, uh, gentlemen. And I give back to Ellen. Thanks, Ellen. Thank you, Mr. Suarjono. Very comprehensive and interesting presentation. Of course, maybe some of you have, you know, have a 
questions in your mind, we can discuss it later in the Q&A session. You can write down your questions in the chat box once again. Thank you, Mr. Suarjono. And in next sessions, we will have Mr. Hendra Purnama, Investment Director of Daya Mitra Telekomunikasi, or widely known as Mitra Tel. Mitra Tel is the largest telecommunication tower company in Indonesia that aims to expand regionally to tap Southeast Asia and Asia Pacific markets. Mr. Hendra Purnama, uh, can you tell us uh, Mitratel strategies to proven and sustainable growth so far? Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Aline. So I guess Mitratel is uh, uh, focused on the tower business, but not only in tower. We actually aiming to become a digital infrastructure uh, company by 2023. This means that we are going to focus uh, to the tower ecosystem. That includes fiber optic, uh, uh, power to tower, uh, edge computing. So all of those is actually necessary to actually support 5G. So then we're going to have a, a, a business that only just to provide the tower as a passive uh, equipment, but also we're going to enter into more active equipment and also to uh, something more uh, uh, technology driven uh, uh, equipment. Okay, maybe? your mm -hmm. presentation, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe I can start with uh, my uh, presentation. We can go to the next slide. <laughs> okay. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for the opportunity. And uh, this is, I guess, a good opportunity for us to introduce our company. In the glance, Mitratel is one of the largest, uh, one of the largest uh, tower operator in Indonesia. But we're not only the largest, but we're also the widest, which means that 57% of our tower located uh, outside Java Island. Java is actually currently the most populated island in Indonesia. Uh, I think 50% you know, of the population uh, in, uh, uh, are in Java Island. But the other uh, uh, island in Indonesia, such as Sumatra, Kalimantan, uh, Sulawesi, Papua, which is uh, bigger than Java Island, but yet there's a lot of potential that hasn't been tapped in that area. Okay? I, uh, besides we are the widest, uh, we, this is actually to benefit for all of the mobile operator in Indonesia, because now they have start to tap the opportunity outside Jeff Island. The GDP also now actually improving a lot outside Java. Uh, this is driven by the commodity, uh, also with the uh, oil and gas, uh, and also uh, uh, coal. And another thing, uh, most of the client of Mitratel is actually the top tier uh, blue chip company such as Telkomsel, uh, Excel, uh, Indosat, and Hutch, which is just merger uh, last year or early this year. Okay. Uh, our business uh, is actually quite uh, attractive uh, business because we have a long term contract, mainly ten to eleven, uh, ten to fifteen years. So within that period, the contract is not cancelable. So uh, if we calculate all of the contract as of uh, first quarter 2020, uh, 2022, then we have about close to 35 uh, trillion rupiah okay, in, uh, in terms of the contract itself. And we are one of the country that has uh, most uh, growth uh, for revenue. Uh, we have 21% and the uh, EBITDA growth is uh, 29%. Uh, being part of the telecom group because uh, Mitratel just lit listed November last year and telecom as a part of the SOE remain on about 72% and the uh, 28% is public and also some uh, SWF such as uh, INA, Indonesia SWF, GIC uh, from Singapore, uh, ADIA uh, from Middle East and also Abu Dhabi Growth Fund. Uh, we, being part of the telecom group, we also enjoy our synergy with the telecom, for example, for the uh, fiber optic, uh, especially when we are trying to connect all of the 
tower into a fiber optic uh, backbone connection. Okay, next slide. Okay, next. Okay, so uh, at the current time, uh, Indonesia, especially in the MNO, there's a, a consolidation from five operator now become four, four operator, but there's actually an uh, there's a chance that it can be as only as three operator in the future. There's a possibility of that. For us, it's actually benefit because the new entity usually to be uh, become stronger, and not only stronger, they they also become more aggressive in expanding, which is quite benefit because our tower is actually located quite uh, spread it all over Indonesia, and Indonesia is also one of the country that have the one of the highest population uh, or user per tower. So in here, Indonesia, every tower is actually catered about 2,700 people compared to our closest uh, neighbor, Malaysia. So every tower only catered about 920 uh, population. So there's actually a big opportunity or there's still a big demand uh, for the tower in Indonesia. And in terms of the coverage, uh, if you see on the right side, uh, Java is well covered, but then if you see other islands such as Sumatra and Kalimantan, still quite uh, quite uh, bright. Uh, it means that it's uh, still less coverage by the other tower, uh, the other mobile operator such as uh, Indosat and also Excel. So there's actually a potential opportunity for us to actually be uh, uh, renting the space to that mobile operator. Okay. Next slide. Uh, this is just to compare uh, between Indonesia and other country, uh, either is US, Europe, or India and China. So if you see here in Indonesia, the return on uh, investment per capital is actually still uh, still the highest. Uh, for one tenant, uh, the return is uh, 11%. Compared to US, it's around 5%, and Europe is about 7%. Uh, India only 1%, and China, China is only 4%. But if we have a second tenant, then the ROI, uh, or the return uh, on investment per capital, improves significant to 25%. Still a lot higher compared to other country. Uh, why, why this uh, can ha happen in Indonesia? Because first, the lease rate, is actually still quite high uh, compared to other Asian country. It is actually closer to the Europe. But then in terms of the uh, uh, capex to build the tower, we are as actually comparable to other Asian country, which is a lot cheaper compared to US and Europe. And in terms of the, uh, in terms of the discount, there's no discount for the second tenant. So the rate for the first tenant, second and third tenant is actually the same. So uh, if we have the, that's why if we have a second tenant, then the uh, return will be quite uh, significant. Okay, next slide. Uh, this is the management team of Mitratel. Uh, there, there are five, and uh, all of them has more than twenty years of experience. Uh, for uh, four of them have uh, a long experience in the telco industry. Uh, myself, I have more than twenty years experience in the. Uh, Capital market and also MA. Okay, next slide. <laughs> okay, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, our contract is basically 10 years, and that's why during the pandemic, we actually not impacted by the pandemic because the contract is still on. And the mobile operator is actually get the benefit of the pandemic because many people work from home using the uh, uh, Zoom or uh, YouTube, uh, etc. So that's actually make the communication become more important. Uh, so if we uh, compile all of the revenue until 2000, uh, <coughs> sorry, start, uh, as of first quarter 2022, then our revenue backlog is actually at close to uh, 35 trillion rupiah. And 57 of it is actually come from uh, Telkomsel, which is the largest MNO in Indonesia. Second from uh, Indosat or Radio Hatch, which is just merged uh, recently. Okay, next slide. Okay, this is the ecosystem. 
So in the past, Mitratel is only a tower operator. So we just manage the tower and we rent it to uh, the mobile operator, such as Telkomsel, Excel, etc. Okay. But now uh, we have our uh, we create our uh, ecosystem because we would like to be the digital infrastructure company by 2023. In order for us to become a digital infrastructure company, this is the ecosystem that we create. So the first one is the tower itself. We're not only operating a macro tower, but at the current time it's about 80% or majority of our tower is a, a macro, which is uh, a tower that has more than 50 meter uh, in terms of the height. And in, uh, we also had uh, also offer a, a project solution. In this case, we offer a service to our customer to install the equipment, uh, power to tower. Uh, we have about 1,200 tower that located off grid. Uh, from those tower, 615 we use solar panel as the source of energy. Okay, and in the future we are planning to improve it because the solar panel is more uh, efficient compared to if we use a genset or diesel fuel. Uh, managed service is also another uh, portfolio that we are going to introduce, where we not only operating a passive equipment, but we also maintain and uh, act, uh, maintain and operate active equipment. Okay, uh, and uh, the other one, the number five is the edge computing. This is actually a data center, but located within the tower premise. This is will create a faster response uh, for the data because uh, from the mobile phone, it will directly connect to the tower and it will directly connect to the uh, uh, data, uh, uh, to hardware uh, within the premise. And this can uh, result in very low latency which is going to be very useful uh, for virtual reality, metaverse, uh, autonomous vehicle. Uh, that's actually the, the, the main uh, <clears throat> user of this uh, edge computing. And the last thing is also the most important part is a fiber optic. So we just start our business in 2022 for fiber optic. We understand that 5G will not work properly without fiber optic, that's why uh, we try to uh, uh, to have our own uh, fiber optic, and as of now, uh, sorry, as of first quarter, we already have a mandate of more than two thousand kilometers of fiber optic uh, in Indonesia. Next slide. Okay. Next. Okay. Uh, this is our uh, performance as of uh, first quarter. In terms of the revenue, we actually improved uh, close to twenty-two percent. EBITDA improved close to 29% and our net income is uh, improved uh, close to 34%. This is actually driven by the acquisition that we did in uh, 2021 and also that we did uh, in uh, 2021. And for the uh, tower, we actually built in the first quarter, yeah, in the first three months of 2022, we already built 371 we add another 507 a new tenant, uh, and then we already uh, have a mandate of uh, fiber optic for 2,117. Uh, for the uh, EBITDA margin in, uh, 2000, in first quarter 2022 also improved to 77%, and net interest margin also has been improved uh, to close to 25%. Okay. Next slide. Okay, uh, for our business, we actually divided into three, uh, the tower leasing model, where basically we rented the space in the tower to this uh, mobile operator. That uh, for this business, we actually, the margin is actually about not 85 to 86%. So this is uh, the highest margin and it's actually comparable with the other tower operator, a big tower operator in Indonesia. Reseller business is basically we operate and we marketing a, a tower belong to the third party. Uh, this also, the margin is also quite attractive, it's about uh, 84%. But we are planning to phase out the, this business by acquiring those towers. Since we already know uh, and we're already operating that tower, we would like to acquire it by approaching the owner. 
And the last thing is actually tower related business, which is basically other service that we offer to our customer. In the past, we offer an, uh, a simple service such as renewing license, fixing the a wire or fiber optic. But in the future, we try to have a business that has a better EBITDA margin. Uh, in the past, this uh, tower related business EBITDA margin only about uh, 13, uh, 11 to 13 percent. But in the future, by adding uh, a fiber optic, uh, power to tower, edge computing, hopefully this tower related business uh, margin will improve at least to uh, 50 percent. Okay, next slide. Okay, uh, this is the tower that we own located all over Indonesia. Uh, if you see in the Java area where the cover is already well, uh, the tenancy ratio is at uh, 6 point, uh, 1.65. But for the other uh, island in Indonesia, the tenancy is still low because majority of the tower uh, of the mobile operator still focus in the uh, big city area. Uh, as of now, they are planning to expand to all uh, to the uh, not only the big city but also to the uh, remote area so we're expecting the tenancy ratio especially in the uh, outside java will improve okay next slide okay uh, this is our uh, last slide this is about our esg uh, we basically uh, comply with all of the esg first one from the environmental point of view we, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we do have the solar panel. Uh, we also use our tower for IoT. Uh, for example, in Sumatra and Kalimantan, we put a smoke detector to identify if there's a potential uh, forest fire. Uh, we also use the tower for the relay for the tsunami signal uh, in the uh, uh, in the uh, uh, Java area and also in Sumatra. Uh, and also we're replacing the old battery with the lithium battery because the lithium has a longer lifespan and also re re uh, recyclable. Okay? For the social aspect, uh, we have the equal balance between men and women uh, within our company. We have the uh, equal opportunity for everyone to have a, a good career path. And also we have a strong CS CSR program. Uh, as I mentioned that we, spread all over Indonesia. So any incident or any disaster in Indonesia, we are one of the company that know about that incident. So our situation room will monitor our operation and asset in that location. At the same time, our CSR team will communicate with the local government to assist and help them with any necessary uh, that they need. Uh, in terms of the governance, uh, since we have four SWF as our anchor investor, we basically comply with the uh, uh, with the uh, good corporate governance and also the uh, whistleblower uh, SOP. I think uh, that's our last slide. So maybe I uh, hand over to you, uh, Alim. Thank you very much, Mr. Hendra Purnama, Chief Investment Officer of Daya Mitra Telecommunikasi or Mitra Tel. Very engaging presentation. I noticed that some participants have uh, written down their questions in the chat box and those questions have been answered by uh, Mr. Destiawan Suwarjono. Thank you. And we invite you to write down your question in the chat box uh, so we can discuss it in the Q&A session later. And for the next uh, speaker, we know that we just had interesting presentations from two key players in Indonesia infrastructure industry. Of course, we would also love to hear insights and point of views from global investors regarding investing opportunities and challenges in Indonesia. It's a pleasure to have Mr. Mikhail Jefferson, Chairman Hammerslack Private, joining us today from New York. Mikhail, I would like to know in your point of view, what makes Indonesia in attractive for investors and what are the challenges, especially in the infrastructure sector that has been discussed today? Oh, uh, it's a great pleasure being here. and. Uh... Um, there's a lot of challenges in relationship to Indonesia, uh, but the, the, the greatest opportunity, of course, is an extremely diverse marketplace. 
Um, there are some geographical challenges because of the large number of uh, different islands that are there, but a very diverse marketplace of uh, uh, approaching almost 300 million individuals. So that's a very large and a huge opportunity for growth. In fact, it's one of the largest uh, opportunities for growth there is in the emerging marketplace. Um, it uh, it rivals many of the uh, the the double digit growth for marketplaces of Africa, and uh, and is only uh, second in terms of uh, uh, the the Southeast Asian marketplace uh, in relationship to in terms of population of India. Uh, just to give some background on our our uh, organization. Uh, Hammerslag uh, Private is a is the international division of Hammerslag Salzburger Board. Uh, Hammerslag Salzburger Board is a, uh, an investment uh, uh, related uh, firm. It's uh, owned and controlled by a family office in Houston, Texas. One of its more prominent uh, divisions is a, uh, uh, the capital market division based in New York City. It has been a member of the New York Stock Exchange since uh, the 1870s, and it's been in continuous operations since 1835. So roughly, we've been a, uh, a firm it started in the, in uh, in the, in the, the old um, Germany, and then migrated over to the United States. Um, the international division, which is Hammerslag uh, Private, is e exclusively invest in the emerging marketplace, and or we advise a number of our clients that uh, who are uh, large hedge funds, institutional investors, private equity funds, and uh, infrastructure related funds. Uh, those clients uh, uh, and the assets that we have under management or under advisement is roughly uh, $31 billion. And, uh, and we've had a very long and stable uh, investment uh, history in the region. In fact, uh, the first investment that uh, Hammerslag had in the region was in the 1940s, where we invested in, uh, in India first investment in the region. And, uh, and, and we see Indonesia as one of the uh, great opportunities on, on a go forward basis over the next 30 years, in addition to the continuing growth of the Indi Indian marketplace and also the, uh, the, the uh, African continent overall. Uh, this is creating an investment, advised, uh, an investment environment or climate or a region that's built around the Indian Ocean uh, where uh, Indonesia will be very prevalent when it comes to infrastructure, um, logistics, shipping, and also the oil and gas business. Uh, uh, Hammerslock basically has, uh, we have 57 offices worldwide, uh, offices and representational offices. We're in uh, 38 countries. The vast majority of those countries are, uh, are uh, would be classified as emerging marketplaces. And, uh, and we're very excited about the infrastructure opportunities, the uh, public-private partnership opportunities that uh, will exist within Indonesia. Um, in terms of some of the challenges that we're seeing, it will be mostly in relationship to, you know, how do you classify and deal with direct foreign investment and making sure that there's an environment that's conducive to that and, and transparent. Um, of course, uh, you know, a, a number of, uh, of the uh, investment uh, clients that we have are based in Europe and they're also based in the United States. So, you know, there are a, a tremendous amount of consideration around issues such as KYC, which is Know Your Customer, and also uh, AML, which is anti-money laundering. So we have to make sure that, uh, you know, that, that environment is, is uh is stable and and it is and is a easy direct investment for those different vehicles and different funds and for for ourselves also. So that's what most of the challenges come in place. The other is making sure that we can work in an environment in conjunction to help enhance um, not only the domestic corporations and private investors that are there in Indonesia, but also the government related programs and initiatives that are moving forward. The other area that we try to emphasize uh, in terms of our uh, in investment and making sure that we have the right challenges, working with the various development banks and that uh, and the sovereign wealth funds that are interested in this uh, very dynamic marketplace. So whether that's working with uh, World Bank 
or whether that's uh, uh, making sure that we stay in compliance with the IMF, um, various different uh, programs and policies, but it's also working with the regional banks, such as the, uh, the Asian Development Bank, and then also some of the regional players and their development banks um, that want to encourage direct investment uh, in, in, from such countries as Japan or direct investment that uh, they may perhaps be coming from South Korea or Taiwan, um, which are more developed marketplaces, but are also looking for uh, growth opportunities uh, because you know their growth level within those economies have slowed down significantly because of population issues. Whereas, you know, as I pointed out earlier, uh, when you have 270 million people in your uh, in in your economy um, and and a, and a GDP with the upside, the growth potential is Indonesia. Then uh, basically, that's why so many uh, of the uh, development uh, countries in the region want to do business. Anyway, as I said, Hammerslag has been uh, deeply involved in the region since the 1940s. Um, we have been involved in a various number of different large investment uh, infrastructure projects. Um, we are uh, exploring uh, and taking this opportunity because of this initiative to, to, to want to enter into the Indonesian marketplace, into the Indonesia capital markets. Um, uh, we have uh, recently uh, invested uh, in a $10 billion infrastructure development opportunity in, uh, in uh, southern India. Um, it's uh, near the town of Manalapad, and it's building a, a, a deep water port, an LNG uh, regasification facility, a large new railhead. Um, we also are in, uh, invested in building a, a 2.2 uh, gigawatt power plant there, um, a, um, a freshwater um, treatment facility, and also major investments in wind and solar for the region. The other thing that we're heavily invested in is the opportunities to do business in, in Africa, because we see, especially Southern Africa, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Kenya, uh, Mozambique, and other emerging markets as, as having uh, the ability to do uh, cross-lateral and multilateral trade uh, with Indonesia, and also from the standpoint of the shipping and logistic business. Um, we also see a, a, a future opportunity in the, um, in the infrastructure business of the uh, technology community there. So, um, you know, uh, as was being pointed out by the, the, uh, the, the previous uh, presenter, um, there's huge growth and that's gonna come in around the investment of 5G and the, and the towers and the fiber optic lines and the, all the other associated uh, uh, infrastructure. In addition to there's opportunities in um, toll bridges, toll roads, um, and, and, and other uh, uh, logistics related uh, infrastructure. So uh, again, we've been investing in the region for a long time. We're very excited about the growth opportunities. We think the very large population and growth of, of, the, uh, of the GDP of Indonesia uh, creates that opportunity. And we know that there's a number of challenges, but we know those challenges can be overcome. Okay, so Hammerslag has invested in African countries as well as India. How about Indonesia recently? Have you had any investment in Indonesia, if I may know? Yes. Well, what we have now is we we have a uh, we've put together specifically with some of our um, uh, infrastructure fund partners a a new five billion dollar um, infrastructure fund. That fund we're expecting to take live in twenty twenty three, and it will be specifically for Indonesia. Uh, first of all, targeting the uh, their port logistics investments, and then also a heavy emphasis on the digital infrastructure. Um, so um, we're, we're looking forward to taking a look at the investment opportunities, not only in, in the towers, but in also the fiber optics and 5G. We think that uh, by opening up and developing the digital infrastructure, it will simply uh, aid the further growth of technology companies, the further growth of the infrastructure related to the Internet, Web3, and other opportunities within Indonesia. So. 
yes, we uh, it's a marketplace that we're putting a heavy emphasis on. That's why we've created the new fund. Okay, it's uh, very interesting because we have a presentation as well from digital infrastructure company in Indonesia, Mitratel. Talk to you later, Mikal, to discuss some questions. And yes, we have uh, just had a presentation, a brief uh, insights and point of views from Mikal Jefferson. And then uh, I think right now it's... Uh, we can continue with the Q&A session. I will ask a question to each speaker and then later we will have a free discussion when we will be answering the questions from our participants that we have received. So for uh, this round, I would like to start with Mr. Destiawan Suwarjono. Um, Mr. Suarjono, maybe you can share with us the new contracts that has been booked by Waskita Karya so far this year and the target for 2022. And also maybe you can share us a bit about the new capital construction and involvement of Waskita Karya. Okay, thank you, Ali. Yeah, uh, during uh, 2022, we had the uh, yeah, not too much, not too big uh, target. Yeah, uh, around uh, thirty trillion uh, rupiah. Yeah, our target in this year, and until the May, we already have the cut of the new contract, almost the uh, thirty uh, percent. Yeah, and yeah, hopefully. During the uh, the remaining uh, months, we can uh, closing the our target. That up to now, until the end of the uh, 2020, when the our target in this year achieved, uh, we have around uh, 66 trillion rupiah, around uh, 4.5 uh, billion US. Yeah. Uh, the second uh, question about the New capital, yeah, we have, uh, like I said before, we have to make the uh, early preparation. Yeah, we have a team to uh, prepare, to participate in the uh, new capital project. And now the uh, public works and uh, housing uh, minister already announced some part of a uh, uh, Building to be uh, to offering with the uh, bidding, yeah. And uh, the minister have the target that uh, this month uh, part of the uh, building already uh, tendering and not only tender but uh, also contract because uh, the government, uh, especially our uh, president, that. Uh, next month already uh, starting the construction because we have the short time. Yeah, uh, the government hope that the uh, middle of 2024 already uh, completed and uh, started for uh, moving the capital to the uh, each uh, Kalimantan. Yeah, so this is the big challenge yeah, for us. And uh, so continuing that uh, for the bidding until the, uh, August or uh, September. So uh, part of the planning of the construction this year starting, uh, all uh, starting. And this uh, uh, our information about the uh, Waskita new contract and uh, uh, new capital uh, project. Okay, we're waiting for the bidding results. Yes. And then, yes, it's good that the government is pressing forward with the new capital construction that's being yes. underway right now. And then next, I will go to Mr. Hendra Purnama. Uh, you mentioned before that in 2023, next year, Amitra Tell hopes to become 
a digital infrastructure company, but maybe you can share in details Mitrachel's target for this year, 2022, and what are the strategies to achieve those targets, Mr. Purnama? Okay, thank you. So I think uh, our aim is actually to have a revenue growth of 11% uh, this year. Uh, this is quite in line with our uh, target also uh, last year where we able to meet uh, 11% uh, for our revenue growth. Okay? Uh, for the EBITDA growth, we are aiming uh, 13%. Okay? And in terms of the number of uh, building a, a new tower, so we aiming about 750. Uh, a new tenant uh, from the co-location, we aiming to add another 3,000 uh, tenant. And for the fiber optic, we actually planning to build about 6,000 kilometer by end of this year. Of course, uh, we will uh, review again uh, this target by, uh, uh, by the, our next earning call, which is on the 1st of August, because we see that the demand uh, for uh, build to suit uh, which is a building new tower and also fiber optic is very strong. And also the opportunity in MA. In the beginning, our target for acquiring new tower is uh, 6,000 for the next two years. But hopefully, if we're able to get more, then we're also uh, going to announce it uh, by uh, 1st August. Okay, we're looking forward for the updates on the 1st of August. Thank you, Mr. Henry Purnama. And I think I will go to Mikhail Jefferson. Uh, we have heard the presentations from uh, two key players in the infrastructure companies. And I was wondering, what are your insights on the new capital constructions in Indonesia? Of course, it offers huge opportunities how do uh, global investors look at this uh, project? Well, I mean, uh, global investors are, are hungry for yield, uh, especially out of several uh, marketplaces, uh, out of Japan, uh, out of Korea, and then also out of the United States. So, um, and also, uh, they're also looking for the highest quality emerging marketplaces to be in, especially in a high inflationary environment where interest rates are increasing. So the, the areas where the highest impact in yield in Indonesia, of course, is in the digital infrastructure marketplace, which is where we will be emphasizing uh, over 50% of the new funds capital towards, um, th that includes the towers, the 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 the, um, the deployment of 5G. Um, so we'll be taking a look at how many miles of it uh, of a uh, of expected 5G will be uh, uh, put into the marketplace here in 2022. But so we're also looking at a surging marketplace. I mean, uh, direct foreign investment increased by uh, just shy of 32 percent year over year in Indonesia this year. So it shows that um, there's a flight to quality, right? So there's a there's a look to, to determine what are the marketplaces that will have the highest yield perspective, but also the marketplace will give the most stable yield. Uh, and, and, and so the challenges, of course, will be in, in, uh, in maintaining a, 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 a stable currency on a go-forward basis, uh, making sure that the, uh, the policies from the government in relationship to those investments are clear and concise, and also that, uh, that there's a, a lot of straightforward transparency for foreign investors. So um, we believe that the sector um, with the highest impact, of course, will be uh, the digital infrastructure side of it. Um, you know, uh, being from Houston, Texas, uh, we, we have clients that have invested in the, in the oil and gas and the energy infrastructure there. But, uh, you know, we believe that uh, clean tech, clean energy, wind, solar and, and hydro and other opportunities are going to be a, a higher yield and a higher long term prospect. Uh, than necessarily the, the traditional oil and gas investment. So what you're seeing is a lot of uh, Houston-based energy companies and international energy companies starting to diversify their portfolio of energy-related assets, uh, especially to comply with a lot of the new uh, regulatory environments when it comes to um, you know, ESG and also having to report what their actual carbon footprint is, 
especially for U.S. public companies and European public companies. So uh, we believe the two sectors that will receive the highest amount of direct foreign investment will be the digital infrastructure and then also the clean tech and or um, uh, green energy related projects. Okay, noted. So digital infrastructures and green energies. Both companies that are present here uh, works on that line of business. Yeah, it's good to know that you think that these two line of businesses are interesting. So I would like to dig more about this later, like as in uh, yield to risk, if we compare Indonesia and other emerging markets, but that will be a later. I will go to Mr. Christofita Willoto if he's still joining us, but if he's still away, then okay. Mr. Willoto, are you still joining us? Of course. Of course, <laughs> yes. Good to know. So, Mr. Willoto, it's interesting, as you mentioned before, that this forum has been initiated by private sector. And we also have like private public uh, partnership scheme in funding our infrastructure project. Like uh, what makes you interested in uh, investing your time and resources to organize and uh, have this Indonesia investment forum running? Okay, basically my, my background, I used to be the agency secretary of Indonesian Banking Restructuring Agency. Uh, in 2000, during the crisis, at that time we uh, we make a roadshow to Singapore, Hong Kong, Europe, uh, and US. And basically, uh, the animo of uh, investor at that time is very, very, very huge. So basically, uh, the every single ballroom at that time is packed uh, with investors. Uh, for they are global investors, and they are looking for the opportunity and to invest in Indonesia and want to understand about Indonesia. They know that Indonesia is in their radar. And when we discuss with them in a person and one-on-one -on -one meeting, we know that basically uh, they are hungry about the information of Indonesia. And they are, want to know more about Indonesia, although they already have some Arab office, for example, in Indonesia, and there's a news on Indonesia, but uh, they talk to us that basically the roadshow like that is very important. So basically we start the uh, Indonesia Investment Forum uh, in 2013 to uh, become a bridge between, uh, to make a connection, to stop the gap between the global investors and uh, Indonesian company, Indonesian organizations, especially the Indonesian uh, local and uh, provinces because they need the uh, funding, they need the investors, they need to build their uh, everything, uh, uh, their own uh, province. So basically, we start with that. Uh, at the beginning, we start with the uh, country roadshow, country investment forum. So we talk more about the uh, board, uh, how to invest in Indonesia. And in every single forum, some investor uh, can dialogue directly to the regulators, not only dialogue, but some of them is complaining. They are mentioned that basically the progress is too slow. They need some, for example, open the, the stability of uh, and the certainty of the law. And many things support that they need from the government, government and regulations. And basically this is very good because uh, uh, Indonesia Investment Forum is not a place for just formality, just uh, protocolar, but mostly a dialogue, real dialogue, the genuine dialogue between the investor, the global investors and the local investee Indonesian. And the other thing is Indonesia Investment Forum looking for the, that basically uh, we have to groom the groom uh, Indonesian companies, groom Indonesian uh, government, governments, uh, especially in the province, to be able to manage the, their, uh, their, their, their area, their, their uh, what you call it, uh, 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 organizations. And basically, they, 
so they can meet they can make the informemo they can uh, present to the investors they can make teaser and the other thing is they need investor relations to be able to answer every single question of the investors so that's why we start the these activities these activities is uh, basically uh, genuine from uh, initiative of the private from private why private? Because basically, uh, we know government is very strong, but uh, unfortunately, the 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 officer in government they only in in position for five years. So every single five years, they have to move and change with another officer. So sometimes the continuity of the program is not there. So basically, we we want to help uh, to. To, to cover the continuity of the process of the investment because investment is not only five years like uh, the the period of the officers of or government but more than five years sometimes it's 10 years uh 25 50 plus uh, and some is uh, 100 years so basically uh, we need the continuity and the other thing is uh, the opportunity for every single company in Indonesia to uh, meet with the global investors, one of the most important thing also. And not only that, uh, we prepare also the news. We spreading the good news on Indonesian invest, uh, investment. So basically the news is always, uh, we, we produce that uh, and we, uh, what you call it, broadcast that from Indonesia, not only in domestic uh, media, but also in every single country in the world, especially the, the 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 country that uh, 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 many investors global investors come so basically this is the the logic the logic is we want to open the opportunity we want to open dialogue we want to open the uh, what you call it the the, the uh, yeah every single opportunity to invest in indonesia for every single uh, investor uh, globally. Okay, Mr. Wilota, thank you very much. And we have received some questions uh, from you through the chat box on Zoom, as well as through the comment section on the platform which we live stream this webinar on uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, as well as uh, other platform like YouTube. So uh, first of all, we have questions for Mr. Destiawan Suarjono. So the question is, in the future, will Waskita Karya keep its focus on toll road? In your presentation, you mentioned about uh, the toll roads that have been handled by Waskita Karya. So in the future, will it still be the focus? of Waskita Karya, Mr. Suwarjono. Ah, yeah, thank you, Alan. Uh, yeah, because it's uh, uh, our big experience, how to manage and how to construction, yeah, and how to develop of the investment. So, uh, like I said before that, uh, now our uh, planning is uh, to complete with our, uh, the remaining concession of the toll road, yeah. And uh, after that, uh, we have to uh, moving yeah, to looking for the another opportunities of the uh, investment in the toll road, yeah. Because have uh, uh, was kita have the agreement with uh, our lender uh, until uh, 2025, uh, but. When the next year our uh, remaining uh, construction of the road will be uh, completed, uh, so we have uh, uh, made the new planning to the invest in the uh, toll road. Now uh, we still uh, uh, invest in the toll road, but in the uh, small share and not in majority. Yeah. Uh, we have planned in minority. Uh, but uh, after we uh, uh, recovering the, our uh, financial uh, 
uh, problem. Uh, we will move in again uh, investment in the uh, toll road, but uh, not only in toll road. We have uh, have a plan to another investment like a power plan, yeah, but in uh, yeah, in the, the uh, minority energy. minority participation. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Okay. I think that's all, uh, Ellen. Okay, Mr. Okay. Suarjono, thank you. I'll be back to you later, but I'll go to Mr. Henra Purnama first. So this has been the questions every journalist has in their mind. Any plans for corporate action in the future for Mitratel and what Mitratel hopes to achieve from this corporate action? Okay. So, um, Mitratel is actually one of the corporate action or one of the strategy that we have is actually acquiring a, a, or participation or participate in the consolidation of tower industry in Indonesia. So, a consolidated in, uh, tower industry in Indonesia is actually uh, ongoing. So, we are in the process of discussion to acquire quite a number of towers. Uh, as of now, uh, but then if you remember that our IPO is actually 1.3 billion US dollar, and half of it is actually dedicated uh, for M and A. Okay, so uh, as of now, we actually haven't, or we only uh, finished very small number of M and A, uh, and by first of August, we're hoping that we're going to have a, quite a big of uh, a closing. Uh, if we able to consolidate everything by this year, then probably our next step is to look for the opportunity uh, outside Indonesia. But our priority still remain in Indonesia at the current time until the consolidation in the tower business is actually almost done. Okay. Uh, in in what year the, you hope to complete the consolidation in the tower industry in Indonesia? Our target is 2023. Okay, uh, but then there's a possibility that if we can do it faster than that, yes, uh, there's actually a possibility. And if there's uh, the, uh, the, amount, the money that we get from the IPO is not enough, we still have a big room for our, uh, for, uh, our leverage. As of now, our debt to uh, EBITDA or net debt to EBITDA is actually still minus 0 0.5. So we still have a huge room uh, to get a leverage from uh, our uh, network uh, bank. Leverage or will you raise uh, some funds like rights issues or other? Uh, unless action? there's going to be a, a huge acquisition, okay? Uh, I don't think we, we need to uh, raise another equity. Okay? So the room uh, for the uh, leverage is still, itself is still quite big. Okay, what country do you hope to expand first after mm. Mitratel completes uh, the MNA target? No. Okay, uh, as I like in my uh, presentation before, so another country that has quite a big ratio between population and number of towers is Philippines. So Philippines is one of the country that more or less the same culture such as uh, with Indonesia. So it's of become one of the potential target. Malaysia is also quite similar to us, so we also would like to take a look. Anything within the Southeast Asia or emerging market is actually uh, a nice area for us to actually expand uh, uh, here in Indonesia. Okay, very interesting. We'll talk to you later, Mr. Purnama, and I will go to Mr. Mikhail. So as you mentioned before, you're looking for an opportunity with interesting yield. And if we compare yield to risk or risk to reward in Indonesia compared to other emerging markets, as you mentioned, African countries or uh, India, where is Indonesia positioned and what needs to be improved so Indonesia will be more attractive for uh, global investors? Yeah, well, if you, if you actually look at the, the region and you take a look at the latest numbers of direct foreign investment, um, India has uh, had roughly uh, $51 billion in direct foreign investment. 
And Indonesia received roughly $25 billion in foreign direct investment. And that's followed up by about 16 to $17 billion in direct foreign investment into Vietnam. So when you look at the comparison from a population standpoint and a GDP standpoint, Indonesia is actually receiving an oversized investment in relationship to the, 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 the largest uh, market in the region, which is India. Um, roughly 50% of what's uh, uh, direct foreign investment into India. So um, overall, as a, as a marketplace, it's got a tremendous upside. Of course, you know, the, the Malaysian marketplace, which is a, is a maturing marketplace, but also still emerging, is, is one of the areas that, uh, that, that has an uh, interesting investment profile. But overall, I would think that between now and 2030, uh, Indonesia will continue to be either the, the, the number two investment uh, marketplace for the region or possibly even surpass India um, uh, because of, the, especially when it comes to the digital infrastructure and the logistics. So when you take a look at that fund that, that we and our partners are looking to, uh, to uh, start in the first quarter of 2023, 20, uh, 20, uh, we're looking at half of that $5 billion going into digital and wireless infrastructure, um, uh, you know, mobile connectivity and, 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 and high speed 5G connectivity for Indonesia. Uh, we're looking to put about 25% of that uh, into uh, a green energy uh, in, in order to uh, uh, take advantage of the ever increasing and ever lowering cost of providing uh, green energy, especially solar. Uh, and then uh, the other 25%, we would be taking a look at logistics, hard logistics, hard infrastructure, such as toll bridges, toll roads, and also uh, investing into the uh, uh, shipping uh, logistics uh, marketplace in the ports that are there, because Indonesia sits in a very strategic position um, and, and at a crossroad in between Asia Africa, and then uh, also going through the Suez Canal into uh, into uh, to the European marketplace. So overall, Indonesia is well situated. Uh, I think, uh, as one panelist has said earlier, there needs to be some consistency and and uh, in the in the investment criteria that the government um, presents. Um, there needs to be a, a lot of transparency about the tax related uh, environment for in foreign investment. And 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 the, and the biggest thing is just making sure that they're, that they're, you know they're clear and concise rules related to direct foreign investment. Okay, clear and concise uh, rule with the ombuds, uh, ombudsman law ha that has been passed by Indonesia government. Do you think that makes any difference? As in clear and concise rules for investors. Yeah, listen, we're encouraged by it. Um, you know, in the past, uh, 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 most of our uh, clients and our funds investments had been in the energy sector there in Indonesia. But I think that uh, a lot of the, uh, the new policies and the, infra uh, and the infrastructure and the emphasis on trying to build the infrastructure of such a large and growing marketplace is now encouraging our clients and our funds to take a, a very long and hard look at Indonesia as being one of the primary new emerging marketplaces with the greatest amount of yield for the future, uh, especially in a ever increasing interest rate environment and, and, and an inflationary environment. So uh, this is the reason why, um, you know, I, we and several funds got together to put together the specific uh, $5 billion fund for Indonesia. So we are encouraged by uh, the policies of the, of the current government uh, we were encouraged by the policies of the previous government, and we hope that any future governments will continue to put an emphasis on growing the the not uh, primarily the digital infrastructure of Indonesia, but also the logistic infrastructure of Indonesia. Um, and, and, and as I said, I think the uh, the the emerging clean tech, clean energy infrastructure is just simply a given. Um, so many of the funds and so many of the sovereign wealth funds and the development banks have such a strong mandate to invest in that particular industry. So they're going to de-emphasize some of the older energy related investments, particularly coal. I mean, it's, 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 
it's become an environment where trying to get a coal-related power plant is virtually almost impossible if you're going to get uh, uh, one of the development banks to, to back the project. So we see solar and we see wind as huge winners in the new Indonesian marketplace. Okay, very interesting. I will return to you later, but for the time being, I would like to ask Mr. Suarjono again, Mr. Gastiawan Suarjono. Um, you talk about overseas opportunity that has been taken by Waskita Karya so far since 2006. So for the future, can you share to us the prospect of this overseas project? Where will Waskita Karya focus its efforts and resources? Uh, yeah, thank you, Alin. Uh, time being, we already uh, have the contract the uh, Timor Leste government for the road, and we have also uh, many experience in the Timor Leste, and the government of Timor Leste have the program on uh, to speed up the infrastructure uh, also, and the second uh, we have the big resources in the Middle East, especially in. Uh, UAE and uh, Saudi Arabia. So now we uh, starting again to uh, developing to try to get the uh, new contract in uh, Saudi. Uh, together with the another uh, construction company, yeah, state-owned company, because the government uh, 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 gave to us uh, uh, to build the house of uh, Mekah and uh, Waskita also participate for that yeah, and that's uh, the big uh, challenge also with uh, our another uh, state owned company that the uh, uh, investment yeah, uh, a government uh, when uh, we are invest uh, especially for the our uh, Muslim pilgrim. yeah, pilgrim, yes, also, and uh, Umrah, and uh, because we have the big uh, above, uh people to uh, every year, yeah, to uh, for the Umrah, and the third, now we concentrate to uh, moving to Africa, yeah, uh, starting with the South Sudan, there's other uh. The, uh New skin, yeah, because uh, South Sudan uh, sell the oil to Pertamina, and then uh, Pertamina pay to us, and uh, was kita build the uh, route uh, around thousand kilometer in uh, South Sudan. That's a new scheme. Uh, yeah, hopefully, this month we are signing the uh, contract, uh, and then. Uh, we have plan also to uh, move into the another country in uh, Africa. Uh, so that's why I uh, coming to Dubai. We have the meeting and discussion to another country uh, to plan to construct the uh, uh, route also, yeah, especially infrastructure, but uh, starting with the routes uh, construction. And yeah, hopefully, this year we can uh, get that uh, uh, agreement and starting the uh, construction also. And the scheme for the South Sudan, uh, the government support that uh, this scheme will be uh, planning to uh, agreement with the other countries. Yeah, no, this not not uh, G2G, but uh, G2B. Uh, G2B, but the government uh, full supporting because uh, this scheme can uh, plan to uh, make agreement with the another uh, resources, not only uh, because uh, Indonesia need uh, uh, many uh, uh, mining and can make the collaboration. Uh, this I think is a good uh, good idea and good uh, scheme for for us, especially for the uh, construction company like Waskita Karya. I, I think this uh, enough for uh, my
my uh, answering, Alin. Okay. Pak yeah. Suwarjono, as you noticed, you have answered the questions as well in the chat box. Maybe I can okay. uh, read the questions again and then maybe you yes. can uh, respond to these questions because I think uh, all participants here and also those joining us from uh, digital platforms need to uh, hear the response from you too. So uh, Anya was asking you, uh, recently was Kitakarya plans to develop a hydropower plant project in Aceh province with a potential capacity of around 500 megawatts. Thus, Waskita have any plans to develop other renewable power plants in companies' infrastructure, perhaps another hydropower in dams or solar PV? I think this is also related to green energy that's being mentioned by uh, Michael Jefferson. He thinks that this sector is very interesting. Maybe you can, uh, yes, yeah, share your response again that you ha have been given here in the chat box. Thank you, Mr. Suarjano. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the green energy is the uh, future uh, planning and future program, not only in Indonesia, but in the world. Yeah. So Waskita also have a plan to prepare the resources to uh, develop the green energy. Uh, in Aceh, we have, have the program, every plan to build this uh, 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 construction, the uh, green energy, especially the uh, hydropower. Uh, was kita now have the small mini uh, hydro power, yeah, mini hydro in West Sumatra, and will be developed, and also in uh, West Java. Yeah, this is our problem, but not only in mini uh, hydro power, but also in the uh, solar uh, power uh, uh, panel. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, opportunity in uh, in the future. Uh, so now. <laughs> Through the, our uh, subsidiary uh, Waskita Infrastructure, now planning to uh, prepare the resources for the uh, renewable uh, power plant. Yeah, <coughs> it is. I get our answer, Ellen. Okay, thank you, Mr. Destiawan Suarjono, for your response to the question. Uh, being raised in the chat box, and now I go to Mr. Hendra Purnama again. So this June, like last June, uh, our central bank hasn't yet to raise interest rate, but some economists are predicting that our central bank will raise interest rate this July. So I would like to ask, uh, what are the impacts of interest rate hikes for Mitra Tell's financial uh, performance, Mr. Mm. Hendra Purnama? Okay, uh, we actually already have some uh, plan uh, to prepare us for this. So the first one, uh, as you know, that our leverage is at the current time is very low. So the, the impact will not be that significant. Uh, our total loan is uh, as of first uh, quarter is around 50, uh, 15 uh, uh, trillion. So, and from that number, uh, we actually already have uh, do early payment, early repayment for about 3.8 trillion rupiah. So, uh, we do uh, have an extra cash from our uh, operation that used to actually reduce our uh, leverage. Uh, second, we also do uh, reprofiling of our loan. So, in the past, our uh, rate... Uh, is hundred percent is actually floating, so it's a floating uh, jibor plus one point uh, one point five percent. Okay, uh, I do. Uh, we do some uh, negotiation with the bank and do a little bit of profiling. So then our uh, our next loan will be around a uh, jibor plus zero point four. So it's a significant uh, decrease in terms of the spread. So this is to anticipate if the Indonesia government is actually increasing the uh, cost of fund. So we do have a buffer, even though if it, uh, increase can be as high as three times in the second semester. 
Okay. And uh, uh, next thing is actually in the operation itself. So uh, from our uh, contract, which is uh, 10 year, 15 year, the component uh, around 20% of the uh, component is actually pledged to inflation. So for the contract is actually fixed uh, for 10 years, but there's actually an increase if there's a, uh, according to the inflation. So there's actually more than enough for us to cover uh, to uh, to cover our, our operation and our maintenance uh, for the tower itself. And we don't have any forex exposure because Mitratel revenue is 100% rupiah. Our cost is also 100% in uh, rupiah, Indonesia currency. Uh, that's why our uh, loan, all of our, our loan is also in rupiah. So we have uh, zero forex exposure. Uh, I think uh, that's all what we, uh, what we already have planning to prepare us for the next. Uh, okay, uh, sorry, one last thing. We also did a profiling to convert some of the floating loan to a fixed loan. So we already negotiate and sign with uh, two banks in Indonesia. One is the uh, uh, Global Bank and one is the uh, uh, Indonesian Bank to convert the, uh, uh, the interest from float uh, to fixed rate. So you have taken some mitigation measures already. No currency risk for Mitratel. That's interesting. Thank you, Mr. Hendra Purnama. So I'd like to go to Mikal. You mentioned about uh, stability and also interest rates and currency risk. How do you see uh, Indonesia from that point of view? Well, I mean, listen, we're very encouraged by the investment grade that, uh, that the Indonesian sovereign debt uh, currently had. Um, uh, so uh, what we see, especially when you're investing in infrastructure, which is a very long investment horizon, you're talking a 20 plus year investment horizon. It's not just the current interest rates that you're concerned about or the current inflationary rates, but what you're projecting into the future. Um, you know, we've already built into our models an increase of, uh, of the cost of capital. Uh, we anticipated uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, later this summer that uh, uh, the, the, uh, the government will probably increase by about a half a percentage point. Um, um, we've been seeing a steady increase in the cost of capital uh, in the United States and in Europe uh, in order to uh, offset uh, very aggressive uh, inflation. We know that uh, as a as a as an emerging market, um, that the that the, there's always a currency capital risk. We offset that uh, in the way that we try to uh, structure our investments. Uh, we typically try to keep our investments in the primary uh, uh, currency of where it's coming from. Um, you know, so if it's a if it's a if it's a large Japanese investment fund, then we try to keep it in in in, in, in the end. If it's U.S. based, we try to make it dollar. If it's European based, we try to make it on the euro side. Um, most of our interest, on the other hand, for Indonesia, is coming from the Gulf state, um, um, the, uh, the the Middle East Gulf state uh, uh, marketplace, the sovereign wealth fund, uh, because of their interest in in the, in the Indonesian marketplace, because of the shared culture, and so a lot of those. Um, Currencies in that region are pegged to the dollar or uh, are stabilized against it. So we have a number of hedging strategies that we try to do, but you know we're projecting out over a twenty-plus year horizon, and we feel very confident in uh, Indonesia's capacity to deal with uh, not only the inflationary pressures from growth, but also uh, the worldwide uh, increase in the cost of capital. So you believe in Indonesia's uh, fundamental and economic stability. Good to hear that from you. Thank you, we call Jefferson. So I would like to know what is the rate of return acceptable for foreign direct investment for Indonesia? Well, right. yeah. yeah, in your opinion, that makes it interesting for global investors to invest their money for a long term horizon, as you mentioned, 20 years plus. Yes, and, and so in the short term, the 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 cost of the increasing cost of capital 
uh, worldwide, especially in the in the more uh, established economies, um, the, the demand for higher yield is 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 uh, being uh, actually offset by the ever increasing yield that's coming from fixed access uh, and fixed income related investments. So, I mean, therefore, the yield has to increase slightly. But when you project out over 20 years, I mean, a, a, an acceptable level of risk and return puts it somewhere in that eight to 10 percent overall yield uh, that uh, is would be more than acceptable. Um, most of our uh, clients that have an interest in this or sovereign wealth funds, very large infrastructure-based funds, um, um, very successful family offices, especially out of the Gulf state region or the Middle East region. And so um, they're going to be a lot more patient in terms of their capital. And, and they're also going to be investing on it for that long-term horizon. There's an anticipation of a tremendous amount of growth in GDP in Indonesia. And so we believe that that rise in GDP and the rising uh, per capita income of Indonesia will more than offset any risk related to some of the lower yield and, uh, uh, investments that go into infrastructure. But um, overall, uh, I, I believe since there is such a strong interest in the infrastructure investment environment there, that the current yield levels are very acceptable and of course, they'll be adjusted for inflation. We'll index them for inflation in order to make sure that uh, that, that that the return stays stable. Okay, you mentioned about digital infrastructure uh, many times. Maybe I was wondering, you would like to interact or communicate with Mr. Hendro Purnama from Mitratel because the company is right now uh, is aiming to be a digital infrastructure company by next year and some measures have been taken by the company. Oh, absolutely. And I'm sure a number of our um, um, investors and in some wealth funds and, uh, and, and hedge funds and family office would be very interested in the, uh, the, the, the IPO uh, that's coming out and also uh, doing some, some collateral or side uh, along the um, uh, partnership investments in some of the growth of the infrastructure. So we are very interested in talking to all of the players in the digital asset uh, and digital infrastructure uh, community, but definitely the leader, we, we definitely would like to have future talks with. Okay, Mr. Hendro Purnama, do you have something to say for uh, what Mr. Michael Jefferson has said? Uh, sure, uh, thank you, uh, Aline. Uh, yes, uh, at the current time, we do have uh, four S, uh, SW, uh, SWF that already invest in our company. And we are actually still uh, open if there's any uh, potential uh, investor that would like to participate in our uh, company. Uh, we, we were listed in uh, November uh, last year. Okay? And, uh, and as of now, that our growth and our performance is actually in line with uh, what we have uh, mentioned during the IPO process. And in terms of the uh, digital infrastructure, we're also in line. We do have an, our own uh, internal uh, research team uh, to prepare us for 5G, edge computing, or other uh, smart city related. And for this area, we also not work alone, but we also work together with Telcom Group. Uh, Telcom Group is actually one of the largest telco uh, company in Indonesia, with also one of the largest IT because they are transforming into a digital. So we do uh, we do ha have our own ecosystem, not only in the tower, but also into uh, 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 data center and also a backbone, fiber optic, marine cable, uh, even a satellite uh, where one of the subsidiaries of Telkom, which is, which is Telkom Satellite, uh, now in the process to getting a, a, a landing right uh, for the low orbit satellite. Uh, in this case, later on, we can have a bundle service where we can build a tower in a very remote area and the connection, we will, we will use a, a satellite as the connection. So this, uh, the low orbit satellite is actually have a better uh, bandwidth uh, they can provide about 100 to 200 megabyte compared to the uh, a, a normal satellite, which is, has uh, a less uh, bandwidth. Okay. So I think there's a lot of things that we can discuss, uh, Mikhail, 
So feel free. Uh, maybe we can uh, also uh, discuss this further uh, offline. So, Mikael. Yes. That's, yes. That's the explanation from Mr. Hendra Purnama. Should you are interested to mm -hmm. talk more, maybe you can continue the communication offline. So this is basically what we do by uh, organizing this conference. This is what Indonesia Investment Forum does. So I would like to ask uh, Mr. Christophe Tawiloto. So uh, one of the goal that you would like to contribute for the country is bridging global investors to businesses in Indonesia as well as local governments. Why do you hope to play such role, Mr. Veloto? Yeah, this is very uh, this is very interesting, and this is uh, we have patient on that uh, patient to to make Indonesia a better country. Uh, lucky you ask that we have a neighbor country like Singapore, Hong Kong, that their standard is very high. Even in the globe, in the world, they are very high. So basically, our closest uh, neighbor become the mirror, the benchmarking for us to grow. We can see that Singapore is very small, but the quality of investment, quality of activities is very huge. Uh, we can do better than that. We can do better than Singapore. We can do the better than Hong Kong if we want. If we have a plan, if we want, if we make an action. And the most important thing is the strategic uh, decision and integrate it. Uh, and the other thing is we have to do the Pareto strategy. The 10% that uh, solve the 90% of problem of Indonesia. The 10% is investment. Without investment, we cannot uh, grow anything. We can without investment, we can uh, we cannot uh, help the uh, help industry in Indonesia growing very fast. So people will uh, have a more uh, health uh, what you call it uh, support. And without investment, we cannot build the infrastructure in educations. We need so many educations not only in Java, but also remote area in West and East of Indonesia. Without investment, we cannot uh, provide the strong, reliable, and very fast internet uh, connections. And without co internet connections, digital banking cannot work. Without co connections, uh, the online shops cannot work. The e-commerce cannot work. Without the uh, strong co connection of internet, uh, the startups cannot work. So basically, this is related to each other. And we have to think that this is not only a government, uh, what you call it, uh, responsibility to build that. Every single leader, every single people who love Indonesia have to think about that. Not only to, to, to do anything, uh, to do political things, but more in, in business, in investment. Uh, without business, without investment, there's no money, there's no welfare for people, and the political become, become unstable, and a lot of things bad happen. But if the investment come and everything's there, business is there, people working, and people can enjoy their life, and basically they can, uh, we can grow and we can prosper. I believe not. Uh, the prediction of so many people uh, in the world that Indonesia will be the fourth uh, largest economy in the world in 2045. But I believe uh, before that, before that, that time, Indonesia can be the fourth largest uh, the economy in the world if we want, if we, we strive, if we struggle on that. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Willoto for sharing your goals and also your vision for the country. And then uh, before we end the discussion, I would like to have a kind of closing statement from each speaker to sum up uh, today's discussion and to leave us uh, with a key message. 
I will start with Mr. Wiloto and then after that I will go to Mr. Uh, Purnama and then Mr. Suarjono and Nicole Jackson, of course. Uh, Mr. Wiloto, please, your closing statement. I think the most important thing is we have to understand that this is Indonesia. Indonesia is Indonesia, is Indonesia, is Indonesia, is Indonesia. Uncomparable. This is a fantastic uh, country in the world. And we are very, very rich, very rich, not only human resources, but the resources in Indonesia is very huge and very rich. So basically, uh, just remember that we are the big country and the economy should be growing very fast if we want to do that. Okay, so Indonesia has huge potential, that's for sure. And of course, offering huge opportunities to invest in the country. And I will go to Mr. Hendra Purnama for your closing statement. Thank you, Alin. I think I uh, agree also with uh, Mr. Karisto. Uh, so uh, during our uh, building process, our roadshow uh, to US to at the time we went to New York, there's a lot of misperception uh, on Indonesia. So uh, with this event, uh, it's actually very, uh, it's a good opportunity for us to express, uh, to actually uh, uh, to show uh, what is uh, Indonesia all about. Uh, from a uh, Mitratel uh, point of view, uh, as I already uh, presented that, we do have the highest uh, return on investment uh, in the tower industry globally. So not only uh, Mitratel compared to other tower operators in Indonesia, but globally, our return on investment is actually the highest, even compared to US, Europe, or other Asian country. So not only it has the highest return, the EBITDA margin is also at 85, 86%, which is one of the highest in any industry if you compare to any uh, business. Uh, uh, that also supported that this is a very stable uh, business with a long-term contract, 10 year, 15 year, plus on top of that, you get a quite a stable growth. Uh, since uh, 2000, I think since uh, three or five years ago, Mitratel continue to grow at a stable rate, uh, minimum at 11%, and we continue to do that uh, uh, to the future. Especially, we have a sustainable growth, not only in the tower business, and then we are going to transform uh, to a digital infrastructure uh, together, with, uh, together to support the uh, 5G and also smart city, not only for Jakarta, but also other big city and also for the new uh, Indonesia capital. Capital City. I think uh, that's all from us. Uh, thank you, Henry. Thank you, Mr. Hendra Purnama. And I will go to Mr. Destiawan Suarjono for your closing statement, Mr. Suarjono. Okay, thank you, Alin. Uh, Waskita Karya is the one of big uh, construction company in Indonesia. Uh, let's you know that Indonesia still a lot of uh, infrastructure needed, yeah. maybe uh, until 50 years, not uh, complete for the infrastructure in Indonesia. So that's an opportunity, big opportunity for the investor. And pas kita karya ready to collaboration with uh, investor to build the uh, infrastructure in Indonesia. And hopefully uh, a lot of investor coming to Indonesia to develop the uh, infrastructure in the 70,000 islands, like Mr. Piloto uh, uh, mentioned. Yeah. It's the special, special countries and uh, big countries. Uh, I think that's our, our, our present step. Yes, indeed, big countries with huge opportunities. And I will have Mr. Michael Jefferson to share us his closing statement for today. Uh, yes, um, you know, to, to, to emphasize what, what Mr. Wilmoto said earlier, uh, by the 2050, Indonesia is projected to have the fourth largest GDP in the economy in the world. 
So it creates a, a, a huge investment opportunity on a go forward basis uh, for direct foreign capital investors, international and global investors to, to basically invest in what will be one of the largest economies in the world. Um, it, and it's gonna be based on three pillars. One is Indonesia has a tremendous amount of natural resources, the energy side, um, in the in the in the in the in the in the surrounding oceans, uh, there's going to be opportunities not only in hydro but also in thermal energy, uh, based on uh, on the the geographic position of uh, of Indonesia. The second one is the very large um, uh, population, which is human capital, an ever growing population that uh, is currently uh, around 270 million people and. Uh, over the next 30 years could exceed uh, 400 million people based on some of the projections that are there. Um, and then the last, which is, I think it's most important pillar, uh, just like Singapore, which is a much smaller marketplace, Indonesia has location. And that location is what has made uh, Singapore uh, a very unique uh, logistics port. In fact, one of the largest transshipment ports in the world uh, are the exact same geographic advantages that Indonesia has in relationship to being at the crossroad of, uh, of Asia uh, and Africa and into the European marketplace. Of course, Asia will continue to be uh, a large part of the worldwide GDP, but one of the greatest um, uh, emerging players in the worldwide GDP will be the African continent. Current population in Africa is 1.3 billion people. It's projected to be 4.3 billion people by 2100. Um, and so there's gonna be a very large marketplace for Indonesian goods, Indonesian natural resources, but also Indonesia technology and Indonesia uh, uh, innovation. So um, there's a very bright future for Indonesia. We wanna be a part of that future. And so that's why we are very excited about to, uh, uh, the prospects and our future investments in the marketplace. Bright future for Indonesia, which is predicted to be the fourth biggest country in the world. Thank you very much, Mick, um, Michael Jefferson. I would like to thank Mr. Destiawan Suarjono. And thank you, Mr. Hendra Purnama. Sincere appreciation to all of our notable and wonderful speakers today. Thank you very much for making the time and joining Indonesia Investment Forum Road to New York. Hopefully you all can join us in the in-person conferences in New York in September, October, or in November. So uh, once again, uh, we invite you to invite to invest in Indonesia. Of course, should you need advice or assistance, please feel free to contact uh, Indonesia Investment Forum, www.indonesiainvestmentforum. And also check our website to stay updated on the upcoming events. Stay safe and best of luck in all our endeavors for our country. See you in the next Indonesia Investment Forum. I'm Alin Bratmaja. Bye. 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 Bye.